Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at SciTechCulture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern. How are we uh, this week, Steve? Um, uh, we're going to go into Apple again and uh, subscription services in particular <laughs> as a broader topic. Um, how are you today? And uh, I'm sure uh, um, there's a bit to say um, and uh, we'll get to the subscription bit in a moment. But um, just wanted uh, your thoughts about um, just something we were just talking about. And we've, I've had some rants already this year about working <laughs> off of this new Apple MacBook. And we've got another one now where um, the, the last episode we did, uh, which I've been able to salvage, thankfully, was not didn't go according to plan uh, because mm -hmm. um, essentially the Mac didn't like cut out the recording of your feed um, and also subsequently the master audio. Um, so I had to sort of salvage it from the recording off of uh, my feed, which wasn't 100% because it's obviously not using the microphone. And it made me wonder again, <laughs> like we were talking about this um, a little earlier, about why is it that this continually ends up happening? I was talking to you the other week about the keyboard and how to make adjustments to it. Interestingly, I had to make another adjustment. I, I've switched off the trackpad so it doesn't get confused with the space bar because I noticed that was causing a problem as well. And now this. So, um, we, you know, I rely on this MacBook to do our podcast recording. I'm re relying on it to record your feed and the audio and not to fail. Um, there could have been any number of things that were causing it. But the fact that, you know, I've been using these products for years and years and years, never had a problem. Um, it's always delivered reliably every single time and then we've had at least three instances in the past couple of months where um, it's failed and <laughs> not that I want to add to the narrative that's going on online because there is something <laughs> like this going on with these new MacBooks but what's going on with Apple here because it just what, are they not picking this up um, or, or well, I don't know what do you think I, I well I don't know what to think um, what I do know is that this has been something that's been creeping into our dialogue over the last three or four months. Mm. Um, and it's probably exactly the same way that it's been creeping into everyone else's experience. And this is quite foreign for those of us that have used Apple for years and years. Um, you know, and, and you would have to say, and we've spoken about this already, you know, there are now so many models and variations around the, you know, iPhones and the MacBooks and all their other devices. It's impossible to really know what you're buying anymore. And I just wonder, is, you know, perhaps maybe the uh, OS uh, X uh, operating system has reached its uh, limits and, and maybe they need to bring out a whole new operating system because system conflicts like this or app conflicts uh, are not good. I mean, that's that's what we would have expected from Microsoft 15 years ago. Well, funny enough that you mentioned Microsoft because we've switched to Skype today instead of using our usual WebRTC. So it's sort of like a blast from the past when we used to use it. But the fact that I felt the need to switch to a uh, different app and then also um, change my approach with uh, the dongles because, again, you have to use dongles with these Macs and I have a suspicion that the dongle in question may have been part of the cause. Yeah. So, and it, so I know that's indirect, but um, what was it? A, was it a um, authentic Apple dongle? Yeah, it's, it was. Well, not an, well, not specifically an Apple one, but a oh, certified man. one. <laughs> See, there you so go. You I should have I should have spent my three hundred bucks on uh, the actual <laughs> Apple ones instead. Um, yeah, I know it's my bad. Um, just but just before we go on, the like just as an example, like. Um, it's damaging their reputation to an extent in that, you know, you start to hear things like, um, oh, if you want to be a writer, don't get a MacBook, you know, because the keyboard experience is terrible. You know, buy um, a Lenovo or a, um, or, or a Dell or something that's got one of those really sort of uh, kick-ass keyboards that just, you know, you can go full speed ahead on. Um, you know, you wouldn't have heard that um, even a, a couple of years ago where like the MacBook Airs, for instance, were the gold standard for, for writers. Yeah. Um, and I actually wonder if it's because they're prioritizing iOS devices over the Mac, which in a sense, I guess that would make sense because that's the future. 
um, and Mac is a legacy hardware platform, but it's just, um, I can't, like it sort of goes against what they're on about. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. They, they, they always say it's the best and it works the best. Um, well, so I guess, I guess on that basis, you could look at it a bit like when uh, Steve Jobs culled the uh, floppy disk about, <laughs> about three years before, mm. like, you know, the rest of us would have preferred. But as it turned out, it, it, it didn't matter. But it, it's a really good question you ask because um, – Maybe they are just prioritizing iOS for that reason mm. and everything else is just, you know, you just have to live with it. I mean, I'll take this a step further. You're, you're talking about the airbook and, and for writers, but, I mean, you and I have had the uh, dialogue offline now where, you know, if I was going to edit, you know, there are lots of free edit, decent editing software packages around now mm. um, and, you know, if you really wanted to go pro, you'd probably be just as good getting a, you know, $1,200 uh, laptop and uh, subscribing to Adobe, yeah. uh, to the Adobe suite. Um, it pains me to say that, but uh, <laughs> in a lot of ways it'd just be easier than, than, you know, using Final Cut and trying to build a workflow on a Mac. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe it's time uh, for me to get that uh, Surface laptop I always wanted. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was looking at him the other happens, day. If that happens, Ben, if that happens, that's a really sad day for Apple. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so we're going to continue to talk about Apple now and um, uh, they announced um, a uh, well, they, that they're going to have an event on March 25th and again, I think this is it's obviously not in the same area but it kind of makes you question what Apple's on about these days that yeah. um, it, it's rumored that the um, majority of this event is going to be actually focused on services and uh, them sort of pushing into um, news and TV subscriptions a bit like Apple Music but for yeah. news and TV um, and going along with that that they've apparently been funding um, their own original TV shows um, which again we'll get to that in a minute because there's an interesting uh, comedic sidebar to that one but i just i'm just wondering if like if you take a go back a bit further um you know netflix i guess started this and set the standard but now it seems like the whole point of getting away from cable was to not pay the exorbitant fees and get content yeah. we didn't want now we're getting a um, hundred different subscription services and we have to subscribe to all of them to get everything we want to see yeah and then, and now Apple's throwing themselves into the ring here, and then there's you know Disney's doing their thing, and it's like you're not going to buy ten different services. You may no. the the most you might max out is at three. So what are they going to bring to it um, to dislodge anyone else from the table? And it would and what is really odd for me is that I would have thought that the easiest thing for them to do, say with the TV and movie stuff, is just you know, flick a switch so that you can subscribe to all of their content yeah. in iTunes and that's it. Why Why are they going to the extent of doing original shows when it's not even their their forum, so to speak? Well, this, this reminds me of uh, something Steve Jobs actually said about Microsoft, uh, you know, back in the day where, you know, their problem was the sales team was running Microsoft. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't know if that was true at Apple or not, but... You know, the market's very different now. You're not just selling a device, you're selling a range of devices. And on top of that, you're actually selling content as well. And Apple's ecosystem, as we know, is a lockdown ecosystem. Um, and, you know, within that, you've got Apple TV, you've got iTunes, you've got content, music, video, uh, as well as, as the apps. And Apple controls what happens inside there. So, I guess it's a logical progression. They would have done their research. It might seem a bit crazy what they're doing first out, and, and maybe it is a mistake, but I would say that it's probably based around the fact that they need to find ways to keep people in their ecosystem, and if they can do that effectively enough for long enough, they can probably force good deals with the other uh, content platforms. And I'd say that's probably their strategy, although I, I wouldn't know. Uh, they're certainly in a position to be able to dictate, but as we've seen in the past, not everyone likes Apple's, um, you know, uh, sort of, I guess, uh, the, the way they, they divvy up 
control or uh, cash. And, um, you know, I guess if you don't like Apple, you can always go to Android. So, <laughs> whereas free for all. Exactly. And, and, you, and you will have to subscribe to six different services. Well, that's the uh, the interesting thing. You mentioned the control. There's um, uh, other stories about from Tim Cook down providing notes to all these people that they've signed up to produce original content. And then that's leading to a sense of frustration, I believe it's been described, from the people that are trying to make these things um, to the extent that it's almost worse than, say, Disney where, you know, they've got a very family-focused sort of uh, mm-hmm. thing and they won't, they won't produce certain things under the the specific Disney label and Apple seems to be going down this path as well. And it's like, well, why bother just even getting into that that space and doing a sort of a nanny state type thing if you're trying to promote a service that's based on creative content which should be, should be given a bit more leeway in terms of uh, what's produced. And I guess, I guess that's, you've hit on a really good point there and that's where probably a lot of the friction is. You know, the funny thing is Disney is nanny state, which they are about the content they produce. Everyone goes, oh, that's okay because they're Disney. They're all Mm. all about kids. They've been all about kids for 100 years. Apple's moving into a market with music and we all know the extremes of music that can be uh, got. And the same with content. And if you don't have a framework like Disney's that started off with Mickey Mouse – and, you know, all these lovable kitty, uh, you know, characters, then, you know, to shape that and, and to demand that we have good family values and, and who knows what good family values are. I mean, where do they start and finish? Um, which I think is the point, I think. Which is the point. Yeah. So effectively you've got an art critic and you come up with uh, an idea for a show and it ticks all the boxes but then, you you know, you have a kiss that goes two seconds too long in a scene and, you know, Tim Cook's there going, no, oh, no, no, we can't have that, you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, that would be very frustrating. We know that as, as producers and directors. So I guess that's something that uh, now uh, we just need to, to watch because I don't think Apple can get away with it. And yet this would make sense. At a boardroom level, this, this makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, because Tim Cook has flagged over the last couple of years, you know, belief in privacy, family values, and, you know, a sort of a, really a community within Apple. Um, that And so that makes good sense at a boardroom level that that's what you would develop. That would be your, you know, part of your business plan and corporate responsibility. Yep. But I guess the reality is is to actually create it and make it happen is a lot more difficult when you're dealing with third parties. That's true. Um, the... I think uh, an, an aspect to this which we've sort of touched on is um, they're, they're needing a, um, a more stable revenue source that they can rely on and services yes. is a, um obvious example of that because unlike uh, you know a big bang release like with the iPhone where they get a big hit when it's released and then it's sort mm. of, well, I mean they're still making a gazillion dollars out of it uh, so they're not suffering in that way but <laughs> it's kind of like a big hit and then it sort of tails off. This is like uh, Office 365 or any sort yeah. of subscription. They can just keep – it just keeps coming in each month. It keeps building if they promote it right. And uh, that's the type of thing that, you know, Wall Street loves and, uh, you know, they keep getting their their sort of uh, bottom line taken care of. But what I find interesting too is that um, that is actually having an impact on, of all places, uh, the iPod line from what I've uh, been reading that – the iPod, for all intents and purposes, really, what is the purpose of it being there anymore? Yet um, they can actually invest in it from what I've seen as being like the absolute lowest cost device to get into the ecosystem and it's still worth them having it in the um, in the lineup mm-hmm. so people can um, – because you, you could plug it into a TV and watch all the content or you know listen to it with your headphones or whatever when you go out. Um, so they're actually looking at potentially bringing in a refreshed version, you know, four or five years after the last one, yeah. however long it was that um, that one came out. Um, and it still has a relevance, uh, which, um, which is fascinating that, um, that they can do that um, in, in, along the lines of doing the other, other usual refreshes and stuff. But um, it, the, the, I think what will remain to be seen, though, with the services part of it is that that's not necessarily their forte. So going back to how iCloud yeah. started um, or what, what was it, Mobile Me, that was the one yeah. that Steve Jobs went off his nut about, um, they just haven't 
uh, as a tech company compared to say Google and Microsoft, um, who are far more um, sort of adept in the services business, um, they um, they have catching up to do. And maybe you know maybe this is a step in that direction. Look, I agree, and I think you know once again uh, Microsoft is a good example of a company that completely has reinvented itself now through hardware. And and also what you're outlining there is, you know, indicative. So they didn't sell as many iPhones last time around. The the iPhone cycle between people buying their next iPhone is longer than ever before, you know, by six, a whole six months or whatever it is, you know. And so the pressure at Wall Street level would be, well, what's what's your bread and butter, Apple? What's always going to bring money in and out of, you know, the in, into the company? And, um, you know, so it's got to be content, it's got to be subscription and it's got to be service-based. And so that's what I think you'll find Apple are trying to do. And traditionally, though, it's not actually their market, even though they invented the post-PC era through the App Store, I think. You know, that now that's actually quite an old model. Mm. And, um, you know, the, the change in the media landscape and, uh, you know, content landscape as well has really radically um, you know, made that model, I guess, not, not obsolete because it's still very relevant, but the way in which you make it, uh, I guess, uh, well, put it to the forefront has to be new or has to be refreshed. And in this day and age when you've got systems and, and very intricate systems, we take them all for granted. Hmm. But, uh, you know, Apple can't really build out and open up its platform now, even if it wanted to. Uh so that then limits options straight away. So you're forced then to say, well, we're going to have to have a Apple content stream that mm. we own. Yeah. So I think I think these are the sorts of things that Apple is now grappling with. And, you know, this probably flows back then into, you know, the content guys talking to the device guys and the device guys changing things and then but not consulting the, you know, the PC guys within Apple, you know, and so... Maybe it just works for iOS because everything I see these days, I mean, if you look at the latest Samsung phone, uh, the Galaxy 10 and everything else, every, no one even talks about laptops mm. anymore. No one even really talks about um, tablets anymore. Mm. It's all mobile devices and mobile device just means a phone. Yeah. So, Except for someone like me who likes to rant about changes to uh, <laughs> Apple's uh, laptops. Um I just want to end uh, end off uh, just a bit broader about this whole thing with too many subscription services now coming out that it seems to be going in a messier and messier direction, um, at least in the sh- short to medium term. And I love streaming. Um, I love the, the, the technology behind it that um, I know that there was something quaint about putting, um, I don't know, a tape in a player or a, a <laughs> disc in a, in a player and, um, you know, doing it a bit more mechanically where... Um, this, there was a bit more effort behind it, so you you actually you know would have to th- really think about what you would put in there because it was a bit of, a little bit of effort to sort of uh, make that happen, and you also had a physical copy. But I love streaming because of how instantaneous it is; it's yeah. so quick, um, and uh, you know you can stream 4K no problems these days. So that part of it's great, but it seems like all these uh, all these companies are just making a mess of the actual model because. I, like I said, I'm not subscribing to a, a million and one subscription no. services just to get because one of them has one show that I want to see. Um, do you see any? Do you see them getting out of that um, at some stage? I mean, it'd be an irony that if in the end it turned out that someone comes up with a bundled service of all these services, maybe that's what Apple will announce on uh, March 25th. But that's essentially a rebadged version of cable. Um, which is what everyone was complaining about to begin with. You know, we don't want all of these things in one package. Well, that that was the promise, wasn't it? You mm. know, the original sort of promise when there was only Netflix really visible was you could get whatever you want, which you couldn't actually, and you still can't get whatever you mm. want on Netflix. It just seems like you can. But now that you've got all these other players, you can actually see what you can't get on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so suddenly Netflix is less attractive. Mm. Um and I think, you know, this is something that they're going to have to work out. This is another mini revolution within the media landscape and and they will have to, well, there'll be a shakeout at some stage 
where they'll just be acquisitions and you might have, what, 10 players now globally and I think you'll find that, um, you know, they're reduced to two or three global giants, you know, because the reality is is that um, it's a much better model probably for the content industry that they do one sale and license across a number of platforms than it is to go with an exclusive deal for a single platform. In, in the short term, it might be better for them, mm. but probably in the long term, it's not. You want your content available universally, and if you get paid per view, then you want it on it as universally as, as possible. So, you know, the, the only rider on that is if one platform will pay you substantially more than you would get from a, an open licence. How that will play out, who knows, you know, once again. But uh, I do think that really if you think about it, you have one music subscription and, and music's not too bad. Really most content is on, on the platforms that are available, widely mm-hmm. available. Visual content is not the same but it's going to have to go the same way. And um, you might have two or three, you know, big content providers that own everything ultimately and um, it'll just be your preference or ecosystem. Well, that- I guess just fi- like as a final, final point, um, which could be a whole other discussion, is this Holly- Hollywood's last gasp at trying to control um, their content. Um, Disney's probably in the best position to do it um, right now but the reality is that um, a lot of what's making this messier is them because they want to control where it is and they want to do their own versions Um, and uh, they may not win out in the end um, because Netflix are taking like uh, Netflix is an example Mm -hmm. of where they've taken steps to generate their own original content so they if anything ever did happen and they were and content was pulled from their service they've got a whole back catalog that they've been building of original series as well so it'll be interesting I would think at some stage Hollywood's only option is to enter an uneasy sort of uh, alliance between all the studios there for their film and TV content and make it exclusive on a Hollywood platform. Yeah. That because yeah. And, that, and, I, and I'm sure and I'm sure Disney would be right up there to want to do that because they've got the uh, given all of their acquisitions over the past um, so 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 much time they they're in the box box seat to do that sort of thing. You would have thought that if they were clever, they would have done it before Netflix or they would have done it long ago and they could have each had their studio channel yeah. on mm-hmm. on there and just adopted Netflix's model mm. and they probably would have, uh, you know, Not crippled the issue. Netflix. Yeah. But they've still got the option of doing that in the future. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. All right, Steve, we might uh, wrap it up there. I'm sure we'll uh, revisit this and uh, maybe after the events occurred and we'll see what they've actually uh, announced. It may turn out to be not as impressive as what we uh, everyone's trying to say it is or even what we've okay, actually done. TV. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. You can subscribe to our YouTube Vimeo channels and our RSS feeds and listen to us on your devices. So uh, we greatly appreciate your visits and hope you enjoy the content. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>